And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is the wonderful Nikki Allen, also known as Britain's Best Psychic. For 18 years, she was a police officer and trained detective in Essex Police. Following medical retirement in 2003 and by public demand, she has achieved a very high profile in the spiritual industry as a full-time psychic medium, spiritual teacher, writer, and angel expert. She's been published in many magazines, carried out European theater tours, made radio and television appearances, and today she returns to give us her predictions for 2024. Yes, Nikki, it's so great to have you back. It's like having an old friend over for tea. Darling, I know, I haven't got the tea though. <laughs> oh, just because that's a bit rude. Got no tea, no scones, nothing. We call them scones here, darling, or scones, mm-hmm. wherever you're from in the UK. Darling, I, when I see your beautiful face, I think I am home. Truly, there are people on this earth plane that feel like part of your soul cluster and you feel like it. And it's like I'm literally FaceTiming my brother. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me back. Look, and I've got all sparklies now. I love Last it. Last time you spoke to me, I was sitting in my lounge. Yeah, you know, could you imagine? Our, this is our third interview. And I think the very first one, you were I, maybe even in your bedroom. Most probably, yeah. I've definitely improved without a doubt. I think it's all the healing I'm sent from all my lovely followers and friends. And I've been working really hard on projecting healing and working on focusing. And also, I feel because I've spending a lot more time now channeling their energy, I think they give me a bit more of a boost. So I'm getting high on the celestial realms. All right. All right. <laughs> well, you are also blowing up on TikTok, which is amazing. And I saw one of your most popular videos is about what happens when we die. And since you yes. talked to all these people on the other side, can you tell us what happens? Absolutely. It was all down to, I wasn't being a vigilant medium or thinking the public need to know. I actually was going up to find out where my uncle was so that I could tell my aunt <laughs> if he was okay. And I had a pre—I had previously signed the Akashic Records, which I didn't even know I was signing. I found that out from someone else. And they said to me, Nikki, sometimes you really get on my nerves because you don't even know what you're doing. I said, no, I don't. Everything is organic from source from me. So when I said to them, who's Metatron and what is, you know, the Akashic Records, it was one of my old friends. He went, I just don't believe you. I just, I said, yeah, but I don't read up on anything. So I hadn't read up on anything, obviously, when I went up to see where my uncle was, I knew I could do it because I've been told by Metatron, Archangel Metatron, the scribe of God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, I thought, you know what? I'm going to use it. I never abused it. And my granddad in spirit said to me, don't abuse it, Nikki, because he was there when this ceremony took place, which I didn't even know what I was doing. And um, I said, I won't abuse it. But I really wanted to comfort my auntie. She'd looked after him for so long and it was just so tragic, you know, and they were such a bright, beautiful couple. And to see him go downhill and pass, I thought, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I literally went up and I have to swirl this pool in the celestial garden. And then it kind of is a kind of like a, a seer imagery visualization thing that you do up in that higher realm. And um Julianus, one of my guides, an archangel Azrael, who is the archangel that takes our souls up to the spirit world. Um, he brings people down with him. Um, and so that's why lots of people go, Mom or Dad or whatever, because they actually see their family and they come down um, to bring comfort with Azrael. So they came and Azrael said, I'll tell you what, I'll take you right from the beginning and take you right through to when you're reincarnated so you can tell humankind. I'm like, lovely. Thank you very much. So um, as I said, Azrael comes down. If people want to look, I have got a photo and a video where I take a photograph of my sister-in-law who's in the hospital room where my mum had broken her hip. And this was literally 12th of November, four years ago. And I took a photo and I heard Azrael in my head and the photograph came out creamy white, like I was in the middle of a cloud. And I thought, God, that's a bit weird. Then when I Googled it, Azrael was like the archangel of death, if you like. And I'm like, Jesus, my mum's going to die. And unfortunately, she did die weeks later from a totally unrelated um, symptoms. It wasn't anything to do with the hip. So I knew who Azrael was. So he said, look, I'll show you. So 
Um, what happens is, is that if you've got someone that's about to pass, and can I please make this clear? Because I always get people say, what about suicides, murders, quick, quick deaths and things like that? It's exactly the same mm. because they know when we're due to go up. All of our, all of our deaths, all of our transitions are timed. They know when we're going to go up. Okay. So basically, um, they will come down whether you've got a quick or long death. Um, with if you're like thinking of granddad, you know, grandpa laying in bed and everybody's around him, he will most probably pretty much be, I'm going soon, and he will be totally aware of any spirit people in the room. Um, some people re re refer to it as the death stare, you know, hospice nurses call it the death stare where they see angels. And I've actually there's footage, funny enough, on my TikTok um, channel of a lady that sees an angel just before she's about to die. And um, all your family are there. And I saw what we see. So you're never, ever alone. Never alone. Right. And that's important for people that have got children that are passing. Um, and I know I'm sounding matter of fact, but if I feel what I'm saying, I'm going to end up a great ball of tears. So I'm just going to say it as matter of fact as I can. Right. So then what happens is um, the soul kind of comes out of the body and most people have reported, I certainly notice it with my mum, that when the soul leaves, the body just looks so different. It just is it's unrecognisable. And I was looking out of the window with my mum and I felt this big surge, almost like I was on a roller coaster. And I thought, oh, my God. And I looked round and my mum totally different and I thought her soul's just gone up and as it did all the lights in the hospital in the room dimmed and then one just shone and went meh, 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 meh. and we all sat watching it I'm like oh my god and it couldn't do it because it's just a normal strip of light you know strips of light but the center was like humming and looked like it was going to explode and then it dimmed all the lights went off and came back up normal again and I said that was her energy just passing through that electrico electric man magnetic field there so the soul goes up and Azrael hands over and it looks visually like a bundle of energy of light, right? By the time it's up there, it's like light. The people that have come down to bring you up go back to what's called a reality layer. That's what they call it for me. Basically, because heaven is made of frequency, light, sound, vibration, they create imagery for us so that we can help humankind understand it. Does that make sense? So this is what I was showing. So then what happens is, is the soul is then taken incredibly to these huts that I have seen um, afterwards. They take them to these huts and they are exactly like the spirit huts that Thailand create, for, like the Mayans created them. And they're these specific huts that they would put their dead in. Um, and they would say that's 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 like you know the, the other world hut and just leave them for their spirits to go up. And there was all of these over this fast plane. And then um there was this man stood there with this black square hat, black cloak on, and um he said east, west, south, north, water, earth, fire, um, air. And I'm like, okay, because I'm just calling the elements. And I said, who are you? Because I'm Jeremiah. And I thought, remember that, Nick, remember that name, remember that name. And then Azrael handed the bundle over to this bloke. Being Jeremiah, right? So Jeremiah takes this bundle of energy, takes it into one of these huts, and there's like a concrete plinth, and he lays out the soul. And then I could see the form of my uncle forming, right? So he was creating his imagery that I would recognise him, and he was just sleeping. And then I said, well, what's going on now? There's like this green hum around him. And um, Jeremiah said, I'm giving him his life review. And so then I just sat there and went, okay, should I get my cards out? Should I go and get a coffee? <laughs> Yes, he's doing his review. And during the time of that, this is the most incredible thing, right, is that, and you will see this with near-death experiences and people that have come back and uh, like almost go into life review and come back again. We all see different beings. And do you know why? Because Jeremiah said to me, I create the imagery that will make you feel comfortable. So if you believed in Allah, the prophet Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad, Jesus, you'll see Jesus, you'll see Muhammad, you'll see, a, you know, an alien. If you had an alien encounter or, you know, a previous life, whatever makes your soul feel comfortable because it's still got a bit of human trace energy, we create the imagery. So that is why with near death experiences, but some people see Christ, some people see an angel, some people see a, 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 a you know a being, some people see Muhammad, whatever it is. 
So they then do their life review. During that life review, if they have broached any of their agreements of their life plan that they agreed before they come down, i.e. breaching humility, humanity by killing, maiming, animal abuse, whatever, they are then taken to a cherubim chamber, right? And I've seen this. I'm trying to shorten this because this is just remarkable. And all my students have gone here without me even telling them. I'd send them up to the Crystal Palace and they've gone to these chambers. The cherubim chamber is basically a white milky swimming pool with cherubim on the walls. First time I went there, I saw them come out and they showed me what happens to bad souls that have created horror, like Hitler, for instance, mm -hmm. right? And so they come out, they sit around the pool and this white milky stuff starts bubbling black, like black tar. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And they said, this is the soul basically judging itself. We, God doesn't judge anything. And then their heads turn to oxen and lion, right? Really nasty. I'm like, their heads turned and it was either lion or oxen. And like, what is, and I'm thinking, this isn't good. So anyway, the soul bubbles, right? And then... Either the soul comes out and he's been redeemed because there may be circumstances that created him to kill, maim or torture or whatever. But if they're a real nasty, right, that pull can dissipate a soul. And I never thought that was possible. So I, so, so then the cherubim, after the, 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 what was that? Did you I hear that? I, saw, I thought I saw something. Did something fall off the wall? Every I'm, Jeff, I am not kidding you. Every single video I do now, something moves, drops. The other day I was doing a live stream and something flew off the desk and smashed against the wall. I love it. Thank you. They're just proving to people. They're giving us credit to say, I did that. It happens. What did I say to you before we start recording? Get in. Do more. Do more. Do more. So anyway, um, I said, what, a soul can dissipate? And they said, yes, if it's created enough, you know, heinous acts, we don't want it reincarnated. It can't go back to its soul cluster. So the soul will literally be be bathed in its own horror, thousandfold. And then it just dissipates and it doesn't exist anymore. Then the cherubim, right, turn back to their lovely big chubby faces, go back into the golden gilt walls, right? So note that for later. So then I come back and I suddenly whiz back into this spirit hut and there's all these blue orbs. And I said, right, where are we now? I said, right, your uncle's had his life with you. So they said, so now um, we need to, he, he doesn't need any healing. He's okay. He's absolutely fine. He's had a natural passing. And I said, what happens to people that need lots of healing? You know, that have had real trauma, like murder victims and, you know, war, war victims. And I was whizzed to the celestial garden where the seraphim were. And these are big Grecian warriors. They pick up millions of souls during war or natural disasters with Archangel Ariel, right? And they pick them up en masse and they work on the frequency of song. And I remember hearing them singing to me during my years when I used to be abused. And I never knew until they introduced them to me about 10, 15 years later, right? And they heal and bathe all tortured, you know, hurt souls, and they basically create the trauma as a very dim and distant memory. And that's when the heat, and they're totally healed, and that, that's why they heal so much quicker than us, and then go back to this plinth. And then these blue orbs turn into humans, and I was like, because I didn't know a lot of these people. They'd all passed before I even knew them, so I'm going, <laughs> so I'm going look, I know I'm not supposed to be, but what's your name? Because I need to prove this when I get back. She goes, well, my name's Mary. I went, okay, who's that? She goes, oh, this is Alfred. This is my husband. We are Ron's um, nan and granddad. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, please remember all this. Please remember all this. So we did that. I said, what's happening now? And then Ron sat up, and he showed me an image of him in his favourite red Ferrari top, and a pair of shorts because they lived in Spain and we used to go down and have a beer um, and I was a typical chauvinistic lady. My auntie Pat would be making a Sunday roast where we'd be having a cold San Miguel in a Spanish bar. <laughs> so he said, this is what I'm wearing. I went, oh my God, you look so well. He goes, I feel brilliant. Because he was in a wheelchair for years. He had strokes. He was just, it was horrific, right? He was free from this human body. And that's when Jeremiah said to me, 
everybody who has ailments, lost a limb, blind, deaf, everything's gone because they're now back to a pure soul again without any disability. I'm like, lovely. So then these people are going, hello, Nan, hello, Granddad. It was so emotional. And then he got up and they all held hands. And the next thing, I'm by these huge gates. Most probably why people refer to it is the pearly gates, right? And um, we walked through the gates and then they, they've said, oh, Ron, we've made a lovely house for you, darling. It's one that you loved when you was a little boy. And they created a house for him in his cul-de-sac. And all the family lived in his cul-de-sac. And they created like a huge garden out the back. Everything he loved to do, it was all there. And a bar. There was a bar there as well, right? So then when I when I came back after, the, and then they said, literally, you then live out for three generations and then, because you, we don't know our great, 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 great grandmother, do we? So when you get to that stage, you can reincarnate if you wish to, right? And that's another story. So I then phoned my auntie, go, oh, my God, I can't tell you. I've just seen Ron. She goes, it's really weird. She goes, I had a dream of him. I fell asleep this afternoon. I had a dream of him. He was wearing his red Ferrari T-shirt, a pair of shorts, and was sitting in a bar having a beer. Lovely. Archangel Jeremiah after I Googled him, because I've never heard of him in my life and thought it was made up. And it, it turns out he is the archangel that receives spirit, I'm um, sorry, souls to the to the spirit world and then does their life review. I thought, I, you cannot make it up. You couldn't make it up. Then the cherubim, I just write in cherubim, um, judgment chamber, comes up. It's only in the Old Testament and the cherubim's head shall change to lion and oxen and judge the soul in the waters of judgment. They're the right hands of God. In the judgment, I'm like, hmm. wow. It was biblical. So some of the, I don't, the Bible to me, not being disrespectful, um, it's been translated many times and I feel a lot of it um, has been implemented for control. Like I feel man made religion is, again, not disrespecting religion, but that's my opinion. Um, and I know that I've brought through Hindus, Jewish people, you name it, every colour, creed and race out there, I've brought them through. And they all come through, not because of religion, because of love. I, I, I would have people come into, I used to have a reading room at the bottom of my garden, that you know, before everything went wrong. And they used to come in like this. <laughs> See, I ain't looking at them. And they'd come in and go, oh my God, if my mum saw me in here because I'm Jewish, she went, don't worry about it, love. It's, it's all about love. It's not about religion. So to then read this, this scripture from the Old Testament about the cherubim changing their heads to lion and oxen, I'm like, wow. And so that's why I'm so excited about it because when I go up and do things, they always give me synchronicity and messages um, to show me that it's real. You know, they give me the information I need and I put it up and I put hit that Google button. And my, my guy, Junas, goes, hit, hit the button and he means Google it. Hit the button what about the Schumann residence. I thought he said the Schumann residence. Hit, hit the button, hit the button, Nicola. And that's what he means. And as you just saw, the more videos I'm doing on my channel and the more interviews I'm having, things are flying off everywhere. It's incredible. The other day, right, just as an aside, the other day I had someone going knocking. I'm like, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, mate. So I'm talking to these two lovely ladies in America, right? And luckily it's all on the, hopefully it'll all be on. On the, on the video right not like I went and, I, and my dad says oh someone wants to come in and I said well I'm, I'm busy I'm busy doing an interview just, just walk straight in manifested and walk through the wall so I've described him his name's Howard and the, and the, what, the interview goes that's my granddad she goes that's my grandpa and I said he's in his golf stuff she goes he loved golf and I'm like get in so they are working hard to enable me to bring these messages of the afterlife, of eternal souls, predictions, whatever you like. So if people say, oh, yeah, that's just a guess, that's just a prediction, it's not because they then back it up to say this is real. And the most incredible one, when I, I was, because they basically said, I, I need to start channeling. And I'm like, oh, blimey. And the first one, um, Juliana said, there's going to be lo lots of floods and lots of devastation on the 2nd of November. So everybody's going, where is it? Where is it? I said, well, I assume it's in England. You know, don't start panicking. And we had a horrific storm that started on the 2nd of November called Storm Kieran, and it wrecked the country. It, would, it devastated. The floods were horrific. It ruined thousands and thousands of homes. It was literally like being in Florida during a hurricane. It was horrific. And so I thought, even though it was horrific, I, I don't think we lost any lives, unbelievably. 
But the fact is, he knew because we're entering into this new phase of waking people up that they need to like do something else to prove what's going on. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're telling you this, but just to back it up, we're going to predict something and it's going to come true. And it did. So everybody come back going, whoa, 2nd of November. That's what I said, I know, that's what he predicted. And here we are now. And that, I don't even know. I hope that comes out on video, whatever. Yeah, I, I was thinking I need to go back and look at it. And I don't know if you remember, but I think it was last time something happened that we did a video. Either somebody came in the room or some, some, I think it was somebody walked into the room or something that you saw. You were like, who is that? They are, aren't they cheeky? They are cheeky, but I love it. I, I embrace it. And it's also a brilliant education for people because if some people who are not awake or, you know, a bit on the fence with spiritual um, phenomena, paranormal, and that happened, they'd be like, oh my God, I got put, guys. I'm going to get sucked in the telly. Oh my God, I'm Carol Ann. Look to the light, Carol Ann. And it's not. You know, it's like, for instance, the last few days, my mum, as I said to you, right, November, um, I think she was there, no, it's 26th of November. I'd just done a show the night before and I was really anxious and I thought something really bad's happened. But as usual, my mum didn't phone and I didn't find out to the following day she'd been taken to hospital. And um, this is when I saw Azrael, his energy over her. And um, so this time of year, I've, I've even got a locket on now. That's got a hair mm -hmm. in it, bless her. Um, I don't know why I have to, I know I have to wear it at the moment because literally what's happened is my niece, my nephew have heard her say their names twice in the in this week. My brother's heard it three times. Um, my mum passed at 8.44 and the clock stopped at 8.44 in my bedroom two days ago. I had a bee in the house. This time of year, they're hibernating or they're dead, aren't they? And the males get killed off. And I had to grab this bean, get it out to the garden. I've had so many water floods, it's ridiculous, which is a Piscean thing, obviously, and she was a Pisces. And it's just mum, 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 mum. I can't remember what the other synchronicities. So I phoned my brother up and said, has mum been about? He goes, has she been about? She doesn't stop shouting our names all week. And it's beautiful. I feel that she's started to manifest, she's learned how to manifest her voice in the ether and move things and, um, you know, create things now. And I think she's really tough with herself. And I think that's what's happening. And that's why I love to embrace it and bring it and keep it real because so many people make it scary. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, do you want us out? Do you hate us? Are you evil? Oh, shut up. No, it's normally someone really lovely that's coming in and saying, look, you can't see me, but if I knock that over, pay attention because I'm going to do it again, you know? And that's what I love about it. That was mostly my mum. She loves throwing things about. So does my nan. Do you know, my nan once, it was her birthday, and I was sitting in my conservatory when I had one. And um, I was sitting in my conservatory, and the her picture of me and her when I was a police cadet, I just, I just passed um, the ceremony, and I had a photo with her. And I'm um, really proud of that photograph. And it flew across the conservatory and smashed to pieces. Mm. And I went, oh, Nikki. And I heard her say, oh, I'm sorry. I still haven't got the energy right yet. But other people, if they'd seen that, would have been having a priest in. <laughs> so, you know, think about the time that you're getting the phenomena. Think about if you thought about someone just before it happened or just after. Think about what's going on around you that they may want to support you. There's all reasons for them to do things. And as I say, 99% of the people that I visit in homes where they say, I've got something here. I say, yeah, it's your mum. It's your dad. It's your son. It's your, you know, your brother, your sister. And they just, you know, they get so scared. So we've got to, we've got to be aware. And I'm telling you now, all of the prophecy stuff is about the, up until 2026. And it's all about so many people are being woken up, Jeff. I'm not even, honestly, I get, well, luckily now I've got my lovely Lorraine that helps me with emails now. And 80, 90% of those are people saying, what is going on? I'm, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, this is happening. People are being woken up yeah. big time yep. um, because they, they need to for the fifth dimension. Let's get down to business and talk about what are you seeing for 2024? Okay. The thing is, right, I don't want people to panic. That's the first thing, because when I first, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I've started channeling and Julianus has made me, this is my old ball mm. from my granddad, right, my old crystal ball, right, and he's made me 
didn't make me because I had a choice, but he said, I really want you to start educating humankind and channel me through that. And I've also channeled other people. I, don't, I say people, but other guides and Archangel Ariel. Now, and when I did the first one, people started to panic and go, oh, my God, oh, my God, please don't panic when you listen to this, OK? Because you, there are, I'm a Harry Potter fan, right? Mm -hmm. And most of the people are muggles or not even going to be aware of what's going on. Do you know when Harry Potter and they all had, like, the big, like, fight in the sky with... um <laughs> <Dottie> Moody. <Moody. laughs> Right, and they're all fighting, and there's and all this expecto patronus, and all that stuff going on. And like people on the earth plane, the muggles don't even know what's going on, right? So that's how what's happening, first of all, before people start panicking. I had so many panicked emails of like, oh my god, am I gonna die? Is it the end of the world? No, it's not. We have got to a surge in time, and this is where I'm sure I spoke to you about my third book, Earthwalkers, which is actually going out of spiritual fiction. I wrote it nine years ago, but every Everything in that book and the second book that connects with it is all prophecy. However, it's going out as fiction because it will reach more people, right? Mm -hmm. And this is all predicted. Hang on a minute. Oh, don't you start doing that. Don't you start changing my voice. Wow, See, this happening? is starting to happen as well. This is starting to happen as well. Hang on a minute, lovely. No. Nope. No. So, <clears throat> someone's trying to grab my throat chakra. That's no way. So, do these beings just start coming in and taking over? They can do. My Julianus used to speak in medieval Italian, and I used to and Polish, and I used to have to get it translated when I channeled him, which was incredible. Um, and it was he was he was very much on awareness. I've got, I've got him in here. It's freezing cold in my back. Um, uh, he was very much into awareness. And one of the things he used to say all the time was, "Remember, the seed of your mind is the seed of the universe." And it's basically the pineal gland is the seed to all of your knowledge. You just need to you know connect in. So basically, going back to what I was saying, nine years ago, um, I had this most incredible download, and I thought it was a dream, but it went on for like five hours. Um, and I put it into fiction. However, this is is what's happening now. I didn't put it out then because I didn't have the confidence. I was very poorly because it was my five year journey when I was in bed, and I just left it. And so now is the time that it needs to go out. Now's the time to, to wake people up. So that is basically about the Earth being in crisis, and happenings need to take place to wake people up to get into a higher consciousness. Okay, this is what my book's about, and this is what's happening now. So we're at a stage now where the planet itself has been overly abused. So we're losing all of our natural um, attributes as a planet. OK, we're killing animals. We're killing the planet. Archangel Ariel did a beautiful channeling on my um, YouTube channel the other day, asking people to please be responsible because we're literally at crisis point. This is why the Schumann resonance is now beating louder to try and vibrate and wake people up as well and to try and bring healing to the planet. On top of that, you've also got all of the fat cats and all of the power people, if you like, are, are trying to create puppetry with human beings. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is what they've told me. It's not my opinion. This is what they've told me. And they're trying to get us into a, a kind of state of control. So next year, um, I, I, I asked about next year, and Julianus is my main soul guide, the Italian one for 1452, who I went and found, by the way. Yes, I did. I thought, well, if you exist, I'm going to go and find you. And I did in uh, Trastevere, Rome, in his church, St. Celia's. So that's another video and another story. So I said, right, what's happening? He says, right, first of all, they're going to try and push us into digital currency more than they ever have before, okay? And what it is, is there is a number of um, people or fat cats, whatever you want to call them. He calls them, sometimes he calls them the darkness. Sometimes he calls them a fat cat and shows Cheshire, Cheshire smile. And he says, they're trying to bring us into a controlled group as a world, right? They're trying to get to a stage where they can control our money and our society. They're trying to get us like China and Korea so that we have, he said, 
they're going to try and get us credit and society based. And what I think he means by that is, and I don't even know about this, apparently, I don't even know. I haven't even had a chance to look it up because I did all this before I spoke to you. But apparently in China, there's some sort of um, credit system. Or so, for instance, if you like do your recycling, you get two credits to your status or something. That can't be right, can it? Do you know yeah. about that? I don't know if it, they've implemented it or not, but I have heard or read that they're trying to implement some type of social credit system. Wow. Okay. That's what he's talking about. And he said there may be troubles with partnerships bet with between us and the US and China. So I don't know what's going to happen there. And I don't know if there's going to be a rumbling of uprising that people are going to be put into a digital kind of currency. You know, they predicted to me that we were going to be told we couldn't leave our cities. And that's already trying to be imposed in the UK, 15 minute cities, where you if you go over a certain amount of times, you have to start paying a fine. And you literally got to stay within 15 minutes of where you live. With soldiers and um, wow. borders, you know, and they've and loads of people have been smashing the borders down. And it's the same with all of these. I can't remember what they're called. These things that are saying we've got to pay money to go into like a clean area. It's just, oh, it's just getting. So he said the control is going to continue, but you must tell the humans not to panic. Right. So the first thing is, is that they're the, the people are trying to still going to try and control us pharmaceutically. Still going to try and control us with digital currencies. Still going to try and control us. He even said, you know, that, you know, certain things take place just to try and control the population. And I'm like, oh, come on. And he said, they've even allowed experiments on humans. I went, oh, we're getting a bit too. And he goes, have, that has happened. He said, you know, the military have got these special um, operations, if you like, with other naughty galactic people. I'm like, oh, no, that's too deep for me. Let's move on, Juliana's. So he's going, okay, you wanted to know. So he said, we're still not out of the woods. There is going to be uprising and all of these implements that are trying to take place. He said, look at the Palestinian and Israel war. He said, that is one of the deepest, darkest underworld places on the planet, right? And incredibly... Someone sent me an email when I mentioned this because they said that apparently there's underground tunnels. I don't watch the news. I'm not interested in the world. I just, I record everything I watch. I just don't want to be exposed to it. I hate it. And apparently there's all these tunnels where all the terrorists are and where they smuggle people, I think. So he said, unfortunately, we have to expose the leaders and the countries and bring them to balance. And unfortunately, there are souls that we'd be lost because of that. So that war is going to continue. He said, however, the seraphim are bringing them all up and they've actually chosen this experience. So I don't mean children have chosen to die in war. I don't mean that. But unfortunately, it's like a collateral damage thing to eradicate. He calls it the filth as well to eradicate the nasty humans that are trying to almost capitalize on this terrorism and move to another country and another country and bring people in. You know, he's saying we need to get it in and get it out like a bad thorn. So he said, if you just imagine you've got a big thorn in your side, it hurt going in and it's hurting all the time and people are suffering. He said, but it's going to hurt pulling it back out and then it needs to heal. He said, that's what's happening at the moment to the planet. We're just pulling the thorn out and it's going to hurt. So there's still ill balance going on. This also is reflected with Archangel Ariel because of the abuse of the planet. It's also like she's kicking back. And it's like she said to me, it's like if you carry on kicking a dog, one day it will bite back. And that's what the planet's doing. So there are there are lots of floods afoot. And weirdly enough, Australia come up for next year for flooding and fire again. Because I remember there was a fire there a couple of years ago, wasn't there? Yes. Um, lots of flooding. I don't know if this is down New Orleans way, but it's like they, they showed me Katrina and showed me floodlands around there. Definitely um, there's some sort of issue with China as well. Um, but also society. I don't know if we're going to fall out with China or things are going to break down there. Also, our internet and phones are going to be not running properly. Um, I think that's what he meant when he said those things you hold that ruin your brain. <laughs> and he said the reason being is that, let's call them the Cheshire Cats, 
are trying to implement control on speech. So he said the reason why there will be fluctuations in um, your internet um, and your communication through the waves is because they are changing the frequency that they can shut you down quicker if you are talking out against the Cheshire cats. And I'm like, wow, this doesn't sound good. He goes, listen, it, we, we, it, it has to happen. We have to get everything up to the surface to eradicate it and then bring our balance back in. So when is this going to be all implemented? He goes, a year of judgment and finality is 2026. That's when we know where we are. Mm. And so he said, potentially, if nothing has changed enough and nobody stands, stands up for their rights, so nobody actually says, you know, stands against their belief systems, then we're going to have problems. So I don't know what he means by that. He said, however, we are working towards us getting an established perfect balance by 2026. So I said, how's that going to happen? He said, why do you think so many people communicate with you about opening up to us? So what's happening is, is a lot of people are having their consciousness raised. So, you know, lots of people are talking about this going from 3D to 5D, right? So the, the theoretical part of that and the spiritual and celestial part of it is that there's people here like me and you because you're an enabler or awake we're totally awake i know it's feel the resonance of the planet the people blah blah blah, blah right so we're awake and we're aware where what's going on so we're not a muggle the muggles though the ones that have got the potential to open up are starting to so i'm getting and it's true because i'm getting hundreds and hundreds of email every other day of people saying what is going on i'm getting dizzy i'm feeling nauseous i'm getting sensitive i'm crying at everything i'm seeing orbs things are going bang in the night I'm starting to dream of my dead nan I keep seeing things in people I see colors around I said you're waking up well done you get yourself to a spiritualist center get meditating you're waking up right so I'm like okay so I said well what is the point of you waking people up why are you trying to raise people into this fifth dimension he said it's twofold and this is exactly what I wrote in my book nine years ago he said one the higher your consciousness, we can change humanity and send waves of humility, compassion, benevolence and love for light workers. That's all they send out. The more he said it is so palpable energy in a person sending that out across the universe as a big giant wave will eradicate the darkness and the negative people and the fat Cheshire cats. But they're never going to go away. But they're trying to implement a one world system, which is theirs. And that won't happen because we're still going to have integrated systems. But people need to wake up. And then they, in turn, teach their children humility, love, compassion, benevolence, so that we are breeding, if you like, and nurturing and, and, and getting ready the new leaders for the world. So they grow up not materialistic, not nasty. Obviously, you're going to get bad people, but the balance is too much in the dark at the moment, like yin and yang, it's not balanced. So they've just got to reestablish the balance. And with that, that the, he said that with our consciousness, if we do send that love out, I used to think as a load of pants, yeah, send love, do you know what I mean? But he's saying if you all start raising to that vibration, it will start turning the wheels back the other way round because love is stronger than any other emotion and vibration on the planet, right? And then I said, well, what's, you know, what happens if it doesn't work? He goes, why do you think we're raising you to the fifth dimension? He said, because if it all goes wrong, he said either by nuclear war, which I don't think is going to happen, but he's giving me all of the A, B and Cs, right? And he said, um, if it's war, whatever happens, he said the fifth dimensional people that are awake and are, and, and are aware and are, you know, very comfortable with frequencies higher than a human consciousness can easily then be taken to another planet. Their soul can be taken to another planet and they will get on absolutely fine because all apparently other planets have got higher consciousness, higher technology. And because we're up in that dimension, we will meet with them and it'll be absolutely fine. We can reincarnate and be absolutely fine with them and feel and we can connect teleconnectedly with them. And I know this sounds really far out, but that's why I think they do things like throw things and that to try and back it up. Because if you told me this a couple of years ago, I'd be, yeah, whatever, conspiracy theory or tree hug or weirdo, but they're telling me it. 
And so I can't not say it's my job to say what's going to happen. So they're trying to wake us up to realise we've got responsibility to respect the planet, to send that message on to other humans, to send on this, like, come on, let's exercise peace and love. For instance, when I said about the Palestinian war and Israel war and, you know, what's going on in Gaza and everything else, he said, it's, it's as, he, as I said, he said, it's got one of the most dirtiest underworlds going we need to eradicate and clear it will also expose the leaders for who they are so there'll be new leadership happening there right he said but it's still going to go on for a while until that's dealt with and so I said right okay so I said well what you know what do you want us to do and he said I think it was him was it Ariel I can't remember but they said basically send love to the victims and just imagine you holding a child in your arms and comforting them so I said why do that and he said because if you focus on the bad atrocities that are taking place you're feeding the negative energy to the people doing it he said so forget about the atrocities and what's happening focus on the people that have either lost their lives or are fearful send the love there he said you humans have got no idea how strong your intent is and how strong you can send energy across the planet. He goes, it's like a butterfly effect, like a ripple. He said, if you throw a stone in the middle of a pond, that is what your vibration can send to the other end of the planet. I'm like, wow, okay. Um, but we're not out of the woods yet. So there's, you know, there's going to be some uprisings, but I think that's going to be 2025 potentially. Um, could um, start the end of next year where people are going to say no more I've had enough so there could be civil unrests going about um, I feel like Ukraine and Palestine is still going to remain the same what else did they say I'll have look. do you want to step out on a limb and predict who will win the American presidency well I don't know you you most of you haven't seen I've done this celebrity snoop I haven't seen um, I call it celebrity snoop right and I basically I listen to the masses and they pretty much vote by email or messaging me who they want me to do them on. And I thought, oh, no, <laughs> because one was Trump and one was Biden. And um, I, the cards and what I felt was that I feel that Trump is going to, I don't, please don't be offended. I don't, I don't, I don't even know who our health secretary is over here. I, I, hate politics i hate politicians i think they are just there as puppets and we, we mostly don't even really vote in who we're supposed to have however i felt with trump that he was going to i, I i'm not all i know is that he's been investigated for stuff that's all i know that is it right but the cards came up and i felt that he, he was going to run for presidency again i don't know if that's news or not to you mm -hmm. I, um, and that he was going to go for it well i think he's already officially announced that he is i think i don't know that's what i'm saying please don't be offended but i don't watch the news then i did joe biden now the thing is with joe biden i got a very big underlying feeling of him either being poorly or weak and i didn't know if it was spiritually or you know an inner weakness or he actually has got some sort of illness or something going on because i feel like the strength comes from six people around him and one of them is a woman there's a woman in the white house i don't know who she is and i don't know if she's going to run for it but she takes no prisoners strong as you like but i don't trust her and she feels like a brunette i don't know if that if that's someone in there i really don't know because the thing is jeff remember i said right at the beginning i i like to be organic i do not want to know things i was i will not do a celebrity snoop. I won't do predictions on them. Uh, what's the point if I know about it? So that's why I stay away from news. I just have no clue. Um, but the last card was the emperor. I won't forget this, right? The last card was the emperor, which is major arcana, and that's a leader, right? And that came up on the last card for Biden. However, it was the main card for Trump. So I feel like, I don't know if he's going to try and run Biden or not, but I don't think he'll get it. I think that Trump will take it. I don't know who else is running, but I just feel like we haven't heard the last of Trump. And I know that there's people that are very anti-Trump, but at least he had the balls, excuse my French, to stand there and say what he felt like, you know, and, and, and was a bit more transparent. Obviously, all presidents and all leaders of every country are going to have advisors, but I just felt like he went out on a limb to just say, well, no, I'm not having that. You know, because he's always been that arrogant person, hasn't he? Let's face it. 
And I just feel like possibly he will be back in. But I want to watch. I don't know who this woman is. I don't know if she's the chief of staff or she works in the White House or she's running. I don't know if she's a senator. I don't know who she is. But she, I think she's quite curvy. Mm. Or she's got, you know, I don't know who it is. But I see her somewhere in all of this. Um, and she's the one to watch in this. Um, she's the one to watch either as an advisor I don't know, I just feel a bit mm with her. And to be honest with Joe Biden, I just feel complete weakness. I don't know who else is running. I don't know who's officially said they're going for it. But in my eyes, all I see at the moment is Trump. I don't think his story is ended yet. So right. I don't know if that's going to be right or not. But that's how I feel at the moment. Um, I've got no clue who's running. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, and that's going to create a lot of unrest. People are not going to be happy. But to be fair... Your monetary systems, you, I feel that you're going through the same as us, the living crisis, prices going up. And they, and it's all this crap about, oh, it's because of the Ukrainian war and because of Russia. No, it's not. Oh, it's because of Brexit. It's because of the, the war in Palestine. It's because of this. And I'm like, no, it's not. You're just literally the fat cats are trying to break us. And, you know, everything is more expensive here. And I feel that's happened there. And I feel that Biden, again, this was in the reading, made some really bad decisions concerning finance and housing in the country. And that will be improved. That will be improved if, if Trump gets in, I feel. And this, again, not my opinion. This is just what was brought to me during those readings. So I have to stand by them. Personally, for me, I just I haven't got a clue about any of it. But the um, the feeling I'm getting it's not the end of him. And I think he is going to approve a lot more and learn from his mistakes. But there are still going to be more investigations coming in because some people want to bring him down. That's what all these investigations are about. I don't know if he's been cleared of them, but when it came up, there was the justice card and there was also a punishment card. So there's going to be a few paying lip service for some of the things he's been found to do wrong, but it's not enough to stop him from running. So let's see what happens. When is it coming up, love? It's in November of 2024. Wow. Okay. There's going to be a lot. Of, there's going to be a lot of dirt dished in in between that time. There's going to be some powers that be that are going to try and bring him down and try and push up the person that will be more of a puppet. So if there's someone, is there someone from the south running? As far as for Republicans or Democrats. I don't know. I don't even know the difference. There's a woman from the South that would also like to be, you know, president from the Republicans. And the vice president is a woman as well. Really? Yeah, Biden's Please vice president. Please don't be offended because I don't know. What, is she brunette? Is she, yes. she, she like brown haired? Right. What, the vice president? Yes. Is she running? Well, I guess she's running as vice president again with him, but I don't think they've officially put anything out. Is she quite a curvy figured lady? I don't even know. Isn't it stupid? Uh, I'm gonna I don't know. Afterwards. I've never actually paid attention. <laughs> right, yeah, because your wife's standing there. That's why, darling. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't check her boobs or figure out. I'm joking. Um, but I, I'll have a little look and see if it's her. I never even knew that. I'm so sorry. I never even knew that. I'll have a look and see if it's her. Um, because I don't know. There's something about her. She worries me. I don't mm. know what's going on there. I don't know what the public, um, their perception of her is either. Well, but, did you mention anything uh, about the Ukraine war? Yeah, the Ukraine war, that's going to continue as well. But one of the biggest things that Julie, Julianus made me write it out, right? And so it was that. Can you see that? I don't oh, know if it's too bright. It's too bright. Wait, right there. Okay, I can see it now. Propaganda. Yeah. There's a lot that we don't know, and there's a lot um, that we do know, but there's... It, there is so much it sounds like do you know if you watch a film or there's like magic in the film and you hear that bash, 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 and you hear loads of voices that's how it feels when I when I went into the Ukrainian energy right there's like so many secrets afoot it's ridiculous there is no doubt there is still obviously um a problem going on there but it's um so no, we're not seeing it all. We're not seeing it all. But Putin needs to go 100%. Lots of people have said, like conspiracy theorists and people have said to me, oh, you know, he's, he was dead ages ago. It's a double. No, it's still him. But I feel like at some point he will be eradicated. But again, 
I don't feel it's strong enough. It's happening really soon. But he will be taken out at some point because the most important thing that Julianus kept saying to me was we are dealing with the leaders of this country, monetary leaders, political leaders and country leaders. He said, this is why all of this unrest and this, you know, the war situation is happening. And that's when he mentioned China. So I don't know if we're going to have an upset with China, but that kept coming up. And I don't know if it's to do with, you know, this system i don't know what it is but it kept china kept coming up so we'll have to just watch this space because he just wouldn't say anything more but there is as he said there's a lot of propaganda um and you and that's the other thing is he said and i i said you know what else is the reason for us heightening our vibration he said the higher your vibration is the more your intuition will serve you and he said because there is so much propaganda, you need to feel what's right rather than look in your boxes. He means internet, phones, newspapers, and don't take in the energy of what you are reading and being exposed to because most of it is lies. He said there are people controlling what you can and can't see. So this is why we're getting things that like I just come back from the G6 conference, the Galactic Spiritual Informers um, Connection in Florida, and it's all the whistleblowers of things like, you know, NATO and all sorts of things and the Galactic um, Connections and how they're working with us on different things. And it was a massive eye opener. I'm like, wow, I thought these were all right, weird conspiracy theories. There are doctors, scientists there, people that are literally cred creditable people. And he said, we are touching, we are what did he call them? We are touching the learned souls so that they can be deemed, I can't remember the word he used, but what he's trying to say is people like me, you know, my title, well, can be author. That sounds better, doesn't it, darling? But like psychic medium, straight away people would think, oh yeah, crystal ball. Ah! <laughs> Crystals, ding! But they just say, oh, they don't know what they're talking about, don't know what they're talking about. But when you've got a doctor or a scientist or someone that's highly esteemed in their field as, you know, a doctor or whatever, and then suddenly they're saying stuff, people listen. Because it's not a psychic medium who's in like the back pages of a, some magazine, you know, ring this hotline for your future. You will meet your, your tall, dark, handsome stranger. These are people that are saying, this has happened to me. You know, they're being like visited by aliens, visited by angels and God knows what and saying, this is what happened to me. And the other thing, which is massive, is the energy of the Christ is coming back. Mm, wow. And I'm like, what? Okay. Let's get into this. Let's get into this little puppy. So the energy of the Christ is Christ again. This is what I've been told. This is not my opinion, but you, you know, don't be affronted. If don't start saying I hate Jesus and like you really upset me now. But this is what this is what I was told that Jesus was a human and he was a seer, a healer, and a medium. He was exceptional in his time. Okay, and he basically created this energy of belief faith and it was beautiful it wasn't incorporated by sins and wrath and religion it was just beautiful pure miracles um and healing on an extensive scale and speech of something so pure that come from the source right so they're also implementing that so i've got a lot and this and i'm not i'm going to keep quiet on this one i'm going to get absolutely mullered for saying this right so i have never said it until recently i have had a spike of people say to me been in meditation i saw jesus christ and i'm like yeah because i was told that the the energy the christ energy will be coming into into our beings and they're like what's all that about it's teaching again this humility we're turning if we don't watch it we're going to end up, it's like, I don't, I just look at, look at this, right? This has got all feathers one side mm -hmm. and darkness the other. And I just sub subconsciously put this top on. And this is very much like the planet at the moment. We've got all these light people and all these, you know, people, all the angels that are trying to influence all of these people and channel them and let them know what's happening. And then we've got the darkness side, which is all the terrorists and all the wrath and the control, all the rest of it going on. So there's a pretty much this energy war going on between the two. And, Unfortunately, there will be, you know, obviously people that are going to end up being casualties of that. But by raising our consciousness with this intuition, they said bringing the Christ energy back will hopefully bring faith back to the people that are not yet awake. So when people start reporting this and start feeling that love again, that 
well, you know, when you when you say about Jesus and you say I saw Jesus, you just see nothing but peace, hope, love, especially, you know, this time of year coming up for Christmas. And it's and that's what they're trying to incorporate all year long, not just Christmas time. Do you know what I mean? They're trying to incorporate into every soul. And so he said the energy of the Christ is returning back. So that doesn't mean that he's going to come back in full body form and start, you know, breaking bread and making fish or the other way around, whatever it is. Was it? Oh, yeah, fish and bread and oh, whatever. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I like the wine bit. I'm not going to lie. Mm. And a nice sea bass go down a tree. But um, it's the consciousness of him. So we have conscious. It's like, for instance, the easiest way to explain it is like you get Reiki healers, spiritual healers, angelic healers, right? You, you all different healers and channelers. We we can connect with different frequencies, like a radio station, right, or a TV TV station. We can just click into different frequencies, right? One of those frequencies is the energy of the Christ. And that is this humility, love, healing, compassion, you know, and trying to implement peace. And so the energy, and I was told this nine years ago, mm. I can't believe I'm saying it now. And I've written it all out nine years ago. And it's coming in because we need to rebalance this side and we need to bring light in. And the only way to do it is for us to exude it, live it, breathe it bring it to our younger generation and spread it everywhere. And it sounds a bit hippie and a bit tree huggy, as I said before, but that's what they keep telling me. And it's the same thing going on. However, as I said, there will still be disasters. There will still be things going on, like natural disasters. Um, what was the other thing? Well, about? let me ask you this. Indonesia. Obviously, my number one country of traffic is the US, but my second highest country is the UK. So for the UK audience out there, do you have anything for them? The UK, obviously, we had the prediction of Storm Kieran hitting us. The UK, at the moment, I'm seeing, again, because this was a UK and US, funnily enough, and it isn't just because I was talking to you, we seem to be, have this solidarity, even if we disagree with each other politically or whatever, um, we have this solidarity, two very strong countries, and... We we stand strong, but I still feel there'll be civil uprising and people will start to stand up to the government if they try to implement what possibly Julianus has said about. And he showed me it was like. It was like, say, like you're looking at a group of people at a concert, right, and they're all humans, and then he shifted it to like just matchstick men. So he kind of just drew us like this oh my god this is so bad someone's gonna say what are you doing so I don't know if you can see that no you can't it's like a matchstick no kind matchstick of matchstick man there right, you go sorry yeah. so, and then he showed these empty vessels right loads of them like you know just the outline of a human figure and then he had numbers there and, and I'm like, what's all that? And he goes, this is exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to herd you like cattle. So I'm like, wow, okay. So all these people that are like, you know, do all their conspiracy stuff, he goes, it is happening. And he said, they are testing the skies. Hmm. So do you know this thing about um, chemtrails? Apparently that's real. They're actually training chemicals to try and control the weather. One, to help grow crops, but two, also to bring us down if they need to. And it's like, this can't be right. This can't be right. It can't be. We can't be having this. But what, what can I tell you? Because when I watch other people and then I go, oh, hang on a minute. Well, I don't sit here and watch people. I haven't got time. But then I'll hear something and I'll go, whoa, whoa, what was that? Like someone's listening to something, synchronicity. And they're saying exactly the same as me. I'm like, oh, wow. You know, and just this thing about China, you said there is a social thing going mm -hmm. on there, um, this social. And he said, so what they'll do is they'll try to all catalogue you. I'll tell you what it's like. Do you know um, Total Recall? Yeah. Where, you know, you've got your credits and you've got a thing in like a chip in your wrist and that says what credits you've got. It tells you what vitamins you've got to take and you're allowed to go on the train station or you're not allowed because you haven't got enough social standing. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's basically, it's, it sounds, well, I'm saying, I'm like, Nick, shut up. You're going to lose so much credit. But I can't help what they're telling me. And this is what apparently they're trying to do. Um, and so at some point, we're going to have to say no. And that's when, when we do that and we're doing it 
tranquil no and standing up for rights that's when the turn will come and i honestly feel 2026 is going to be this massive shift and balance and most of the leaders or the people that have got influence over our countries will be eradicated or exposed for what they are so there'll be lots of investigations lots of inquiries lots of who did what you know and also um i think it was ariel that said this you know, she kept saying, sign the dotted line, sign the dotted line. And what she means is petitions, start voicing. You know, everybody says, oh, it doesn't really matter. It's, I'm just one person. But if everybody thinks that, nobody's going to get anything changed. If you look back, you know, back in the 70s, we were still wailing. We were still killing whales for candles and lipstick. Do you know, we got it changed. And we, and the other thing, the most important message they said is, you are just renting this planet for your experience for this amount of time. Leave it as you'd want to find it. And that's so true. So, you know, get those plants in that encourage the bees. Without the bees, we're nothing. Recycle your stuff, sign the petition, start standing up for the animal abusers, child abusers, do the petitions, start making yourself count. And, and that was the one thing she was pleading that was Archangel Ariel. I cannot believe, right? And she was the one that turned Alexa on and, and started playing this music. And she threw something over there. And she was saying, please wake up. Not only have you got to wake up consciously, she said, if you don't choose to, that's fine. But wake up to where you're living, what you're doing, how you're implementing, what you know your impact is on the planet, what legacy you leaving for your generations after you what legacy you're leaving for your plot of land that you live upon and it got really heavy you know and I'm not that sort of person but I'm like oh my god <laughs> I'm getting really serious but it's true and we are at a crisis point but most people who are young souls or more materially focused won't have a clue They'll just moan about the fact that the government are rubbish and, you know, everything's going wrong and all oh, those wars. Why don't they sort it out? Why is our country going in? Because we are going to be putting more troops in a new will for Palestinian. I saw that. I don't know if they've already gone in, but there's a lot more of that going on. Mm, wow. And Indonesia, there seems to be either an earthquake or a shattering of Earth in that direction. And possibly you mentioned Hawaii earlier, but um, that's one of the oldest Atlanteans land sites you know on the planet and stuff's going to come up around there as well and i don't know if that means civilizations are going to be exposed from the water or there's going to be another volcano and you said it you said it before we start recording i thought oh my god you've even mentioned it you don't even know you say and this is the thing people don't even know they're getting these challenges and downloads but if your ears are going and you're seeing synchronicity numerology angel numbers and stuff, things that go bump in the night and you know that something's going to happen, then it happens. You're getting really lucid dreams. You can see people and feel them without even talking to them. And when I say see, you just know what they're like. You see them and it's so strong. You know, Avatar, I mm -hmm. see you. Yeah. That is such a powerful thing to say to someone. And I said it so many times when I was in Florida. I see you. I can see your soul because these are the windows to soul. It's totally true. And... Um, it's a beautiful energy that we're going into. It's There's a few teething pains because a lot of light workers on their thousands, millions are reporting, um, they call it fifth dimension sickness or ascension sickness, where they're a bit out of sorts, they've got memory problems, a bit dizzy, nausea, having digestive issues because this energy is raising up and it needs to happen. And as I say, the people that sit here and watch me and go, what a load of old pants, then that's fine. But the people that sit there going, wow, what do I need to do? They're the ones that are going to be better off at the end of it all. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. they're going to be so much open to having a, a richer life. I don't mean money-wise, but having a more fulfilled life and, and knowing what decisions to make without ego. And th they'll live better for it, definitely. And that's what's going on. And the muggles haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's my personal prediction and that is that nikki allen is going to transform from britain's best psychic to earth's best psychic in 2024 oh, thank, you. thank you so much I, I try my best as you know i, I don't do one-to-one -one readings now because one i haven't got the time and two my energy for people that don't know i have fibromyalgia well apparently i do i'm healing from it and 
MA, which is chronic fatigue syndrome. And so I haven't got the energy to do one-to-ones. However, I must say, I do, now and then I do evenings of mediumship, normally share it with my brother, um, because obviously we're all psychics in our family. And I have to say the messages that came through were incredible. And even to the extent where there were angels coming in, angel frequency was coming in. So, and my dad predicted, which is in this book, my dad predicted back in 2014 that I would work on the most deepest and profoundest level I've ever worked in my life and I wouldn't believe what I was doing. It's so right. I'm just going to do readings and a few workshops. But this stuff coming in, it is huge. It's literally like they are reporting on what I need to tell humankind about the planet. And I never, ever thought that. And then part of me, as, as I said, part of my ego got no right to think it thought oh my god I'm gonna sound like one of these conspiracy theorists that are on telegram or whatever but they back it up and then they predict things and they happen you know we've literally just got to and I'll tell you what it was I remember when I was doing my five years in bed after I had this road accident just in case nobody knows who I am and watch this for the first time and I had a massive spiritual rebirth because I was just thought well they said I'd never walk again and never get out of bed so anyway um, during the time that all the angels come down, I knew they were there because the dogs would bark at them. So I knew they were present in the room and there was weird stuff that happened all the time. <laughs> I would introduce themselves and I wouldn't know where they were. And I was so angry at the time because I'd had this road accident. I can't remember if I said this to you before, but when Raguel, no, uh, Metatron, I was like, and that's a made up name, you sound like a transformer. And then Raguel, I was like, what sort of name is Raguel? That's not an angel. Oh my God. When I Googled it, they existed. I'm like, sorry. Sorry, sorry, angels, come back, please come back. Um, but you know, even back then, I've lost my train of thought now because I was thinking about my dad again, telling me about what I was going to do now. But even back then, you know, I, I I have to pinch myself to think, oh my goodness, I really am connecting with angelic energy, the ones that everybody puts wings on, and they don't have wings. Um, that's just so you identify you can identify them. And it's incredible. I can't remember what I was going to say then, but I'll tell you, this is how it's working, right? I When I was recently at this um, conference in Florida, um, I, I decided to do a mass exodus up to the Crystal Palace. Over a thousand people, I said, right, we're going to all go up to where I get all my information from source, right? I'm going to take you up there. You can have a cup of tea with your mum, or you can go in the cherubim tank, go anywhere you want. I'm going to take you to the door and we're all going to go in, right? And everybody was up for it. I tell you what, best crowds ever, America. You're so open and excited. They welcomed me. They didn't know who I was. It was just the most incredible experience of my life, right? And so I said, come on, we're going to go up there. I'm going to take you in. Now, one of the girls, she didn't say anything to me. In fact, she just, she emailed me a couple of days ago. I'm like, why didn't you tell me at the time? So when she went up, she was taken through the door and then she was just swifted off to this stadium. And there was an angel there in blue robes and she wasn't, you didn't know about angels. And so she said, well, what am I doing here? He goes, you really need to speak up for yourself. You need to start expressing yourself. And, and she said, who are you? And he said, I'm Michael. And she was like, Archangel Michael. And so then it went on. So the following day, right, after the evening I did, I was down at my stall because we all had our allotted stalls. And as soon as she walked up to me, before she said a word, I said, Archangel Michael's with you. I can see him all around you. You're just absolutely pulsating blue. You've met Michael. And she went, oh, okay. And she didn't tell me then, but she sent me an email a couple of days ago saying I didn't know what to say. I was so shocked. She said, but I met him for the first time ever that night. And she goes, my life has changed so much. It's embracing his energy. I've changed so much in my life. And, you know, things that I knew were wrong, I've got rid of. I'm making plans. I'm changing. And it's like, get in. And it's really, really happening. So many people are waking up. And this term, waking up, is literally just being aware of other celestial beings or galactic beings, whatever they may be, positive or negative, obviously 99.9 .9 positive, they're coming in and saying, look, we need to teach you how to love yourself, love others. We need to teach you how to create these new generations. We need to teach you that your planet is in crisis and humankind's in crisis. It's all wrong. We're eradicating it. We need your help. Because we can't, they can't interfere with free will. So we have to invoke them and use their energy to push it out there. So you work for the angels by doing what you do magnificently 
Look how much you've grown. It's incredible. Look at all the content that you're now expanding to. It's because it's all led, whether you know it or not, by them. And again, this is all in the book. Portal mediums, they're called in my fiction book, Earthwalkers, right? And literally, this is exactly what's happening. And we shall put people forward to give the microphone to the voices of light. Apparently, that's me. Now, is that... The drag in the barrel there. Is that book out already? No, right. What's happened is, is that it went to my amazing editor and he's done all the rewrites and suggestions, you know. I've been so busy, so busy. I haven't had one second to go to the book. However, I'm going out to Spain and I'm going to try and stretch um, interviews a bit more so that I can get the editing done. I was going to get out for Christmas. It's impossible now. Um, so it will be out. I'm going for perhaps April, May, um, mm. because then I can look at it properly. I haven't even got a designer yet for the cover. Um, and I need a formatter to put it on KDP because I'm going to self-publish again. Um, and I'm so excited. Everybody keeps saying, when's it coming? When's it coming? And I really did want it to go for Christmas, but I just haven't had the time. And the problem is, what you know, I literally rest the day before, rest the day after to do these interviews because of my condition. So when people see me, they think, oh, God, she looks really well. Why hasn't she got it sorted? Because I have to pace. And the problem is, if I then started tomorrow getting on with the book, I'd end up crashing and get going into a real bad state of fatigue. And it's so frustrating. And I keep saying to them, because the next question people ask when they're watching it is, why haven't you been healed? And I'm like, it's a very good question. Why haven't I been healed, Archangels and everybody else? And I feel um, that I am I very much, as I was told again by my dad all those years ago from the spirit world, um, he said, you're going to be a pioneer. You're going to help people get through the darkest abyss of their life. You're going to deal with people in crisis. You're going to bring them out and say, look how positive you can be. Look how, how you can change your life, even if you have a severe disability. And so that's true. You know, this book has reached thousands and thousands. And people still now are saying, you've changed my life because I realize I can change my concept of the state of my life at the moment, especially for this. This is like missing millions or millions missing. Um, the hashtag millions missing. Millions of people in the US have got this where literally so many people are literally left in bed to rot. Nobody helps them. They just throw painkillers, pharma stuff at them, pharmaceuticals at them. And um, so I'm here to say you can. You can get to a state where even if your body's letting you down, you can still reach people and I am in their thousands and I'm so grateful for that and I feel like if I was well now I'd be out there touring again to, and I you know I was about to tour America and Australia but I feel like I'm I'm going to be more doing specialist things like conferences and resting going to do a conference abroad hopefully a load in America because I absolutely adore it over there and then come back and again Gordon Smith very famous medium said to me years ago, you know that you, you're actually, America is going to be your end game. He said, you are going to just connect with America and they're just going to love you and you're going to love it back. And I think it's right. And it started with you. God bless you, you beautiful, beautiful man. Thank you. And the G6 <laughs> Florida Conference, boom. Good morning, America. I love you all. And I just, I love it. I just love the energy of them. I love their openness. I love the fact that they're willing to take on things that, you know, that they perhaps were a bit dodgy with. I think, don't get me wrong, UK is absolutely superb as well, but I think people are a bit more reserved, you know, but they're like, yeah, we'll go for it. And here they're like, hmm, shall we or not? Do you know mm. what I mean? Well, I know. I adore both. I adore both. Well, um, I so I feel like they're keeping me here to do this because I'm in the comfort of my own home and I can reach thousands just by an hour or so of talking. And that to me makes my heart sing that I'm sending that light out to places of darkness, you know, where people are in darkness and for them to be inspired. And again, another high level of emails of people waking up and saying, this happened today and I saw a butterfly. Then I saw another butterfly and then I saw a butterfly and I'm going, yeah, that's how it works. Welcome to my world. This is it's just a magical world of synchronicity, signs, and knowing you are not alone. And I get a reminder every single day, and we just saw it. I cannot wait to see what that was. 
I don't even know what it was that went flying. I just heard the bang. Well, I, I can see it. Well, I know that you're not doing one-on-one -on -one readings anymore, but if mm -hmm. people have questions for you, do you answer them? And if so, how do they contact you? The best thing to do is, is the easiest way, as I say, I'm getting hundreds of emails a day now, which I thank you for, but you will go to Lorraine, my assistant, because I cannot handle it anymore because of my condition. I was doing like eight days, eight days, a, a, sorry, eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. So if you comment on my YouTube channel, of anything that you would like to answer or ask, I can find you on there. You can by all means email me, but it's, easier if you comment under videos i've already done um i'm a i'm literally nick just put nikki allen in on youtube i'm also on instagram tiktok facebook so you can find me on all of those but i will say to you there are literally thousands a week asking questions mm. i try to reach yours so if you don't get a reply from me please don't think i'm ignoring you it really has gone beautifully massive but I do feel really guilty that I can't reach everyone. Do you know what I mean? Lorraine does a magnificent job. She, she's an exceptionally spiritually gifted, beautiful woman um, who deals with everybody so well. And what she does is she sends the emails to me. And in my spare time, I, re I read through them. Um, but it's really about watching the videos and commenting and saying, actually, could you do this or could you do that? To be honest with you, Prism Living course that I do online, which is an online seven-week course, that's a spiritual development and waking up. And then I cover so many, if you look at the playlists on my YouTube channel, I cover every possible subject from, you know, I do, I, I do a stages of grief course to help you through grief, grieving, I do um, angel awareness, you name it. Anything to do with the afterlife, angels, paranormal, occult, you name it, it's on there. So most of it will be on there. So before asking the question, skirt through the playlists, because I bet you I've already answered it, because I say so many people there, oh, could you do, what was it the other day? Oh, yeah, could you do something on Archangel Michael? I went, yeah, I, I did that a couple of weeks ago. Oh, sorry, I missed that. So just go through those first. And then if you can't find the answer, then get hold of me. And um, that's the best way of doing it. And um, this, I say, and then the, that for chronic illness, me, myself and I, that book, that one is about how I was dragged from detective and haunted until I worked as a full time medium. That's really good for developing mediums and people that want who are perhaps on the fence and don't know if this is real or not. Um, the Rise and Fall, that book um, basically shows you and well, that that is ultimate proof of the afterlife. If you don't believe um, in the afterlife and angels after reading that then you are never ever going to believe ever because there's some incredible and true stories in there as well um, from other people that have you know written written their bit in there um, and that's the best I can do the best I can do is speak to beautiful people like you Jeff try and reach more and more people get the next book out and I've also got what happens when we die that's got to go out and then I've got to get the second book out of her focus I need to get some sort of dimensional time thing where I can mm -hmm. like do a day here as Nikki and then do another one in an alternative universe or alternate universe and then get it get get it written there. So I'm trying to get it all in because I'm so excited that people are starting to listen to me and that I can bring this to you. And as I say, I never planned for a single second to channel directly. What I normally do is I meditate go up and I go, oh, yeah, that's nice. And if there's stuff I think might be interesting, I mention it. And then literally you shall speak. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You shall speak to the human. He calls them the humans, love is art. You shall speak to the humans. I'm like, no, you're all right. You will speak. And I'm like, all right, then. So I said, what do you want me to do? And he literally, they want me to do it live. So I literally sit there and I communicate straight away. I don't know who I'm going to meet, what, what I'm going to say. I literally zone into the old crystal ball I've been doing since I was a kid playing it with my granddad and I literally just repeat everything they say direct messages from heaven to the public wow it's magical it's incredible well I I'm, just am so blessed I'm well, so blessed well you having new books coming out gives me a great reason to bring you back so that's good for me yeah 
That'll be wonderful, darling. Mm. I will come back as much as you want me. Oh, I would love it, my little chocolate snowflake. <laughs> Before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? All of the upper realms are working hard to bring us the most beautiful planet that we could have experienced for a long time. So no matter what happens in the next year, year or two, okay, no matter what you you, you see on the news, whatever's going on, just ride the storm because I promise you they are bringing a rainbow, okay? So just hang on in there, humans, because there is powers that be that are working so hard even a new energy of a crystal that's been introduced that will heal people and help people. There is so much coming in. Um, it's going to blow your mind. I'm telling you, and this isn't a happy ever after because of all the atrocities that are happening, but it's, it is time. It is time now that people are needing to stand up and be judged and they will be. And it will be, you know, we're still going to get the bad people, but it's certainly not going to be nothing like this. The balance is going to be restored. So you can be rest assured that your children will grow up in a harmonious and beautiful planet, far more intelligent and far more informed spiritually than it's ever been. And can I just quickly say something else? There has been a massive, massive rise in children with ADHD, autism. Um, I have a video on it on my playlist. The autistic children that are nonverbal, and ADHD children that have been given these human titles. I'm not taking away how desperately difficult it is for parents that have got children like this, but just remember they are the new wave coming in and they are teaching, despite the fact that they may be difficult to handle, they're teaching the simplicities of life. They don't care about material stuff. They don't want night trainers. They want water. They want to feel water. They want to be in water. They love to see blue. They want to hold crystals. They are half spirit half human that didn't really want to come down for full incarnation so if you have a child like that rest assured you've got a very special beautiful soul that's been introduced to the planet to bring this love humility and tranquility and don't panic if you see jesus in your dreams or your meditations <laughs> nikki thank you for and your... on that note well nikki thank you for your message and thank you again for coming back Thank you for having me. I love you. And God bless you. May the angels bless you because without you, people like me can't get out there and bring what we need to to humanity. So bless you and thank you, Jeff, so much. Well, thank you. God bless you. And I love you too. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.